Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. All right. So let's get into it and let's welcome our guest, Dr. Faith B. Israel, uh, Deputy Chief Secretary and, of course, Secretary of Health. Wellness and Wellness social protection. And social protection. All right. Great. Yes, yes, yes. Let's get into it, Dr. Faith. Uh, clearly, uh, the Prime Minister said yesterday in his press conference that uh, the hiring of a uh, Chief Administrator falls under the remit or uh, straight in the lap of the Executive Council of the THA. <laughs> well, you know, I, um, I'm actually really happy that, that Mr. McFarlane was here before and speaking, having been in the Tobago House of Assembly way before I was probably even born. Well, no, I'm not that young. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, really expounding on uh, the process. So I actually came today to walk us through what the process is, because I think um, many Tobigonians, many Trinbigonians don't understand it. If I'm honest, I did not understand what the process was um, before getting into this position. So if, if the executive, what, what the, the prime minister is trying to do is conflate several issues. Um, the executive, meaning the politicians, me, Fali, Zia, and so forth, we do not have the power to appoint, to fire, to suspend, or anything like that, any public servant. We simply don't. We simply do not. And I am actually glad that there is a clear distinction in the public service that actually is able to protect public servants and has a system that is separate from the political part of it. Because that, that, that distinction is absolutely necessary. I, I think it's important for us to recognize that the Section 71, and I don't know if the, the producer has that to put up, Section 71. Yes. yes. And if you go down a little bit, so this is Section 71 of the Tobago House of Assembly Act, and it says 71, one says, there shall be assigned to the assembly a chief administrator who shall be a public officer for the purposes of Section 121 of the Constitution and so forth. And it speaks about, you know, we could skip the other stuff, but if we could go down to number four in particular. No, let me start with three. The chief administrator shall be an accounting officer who shall be responsible for any such division as may be assigned to him by the chief secretary. So the chief administrator, even though traditionally and as far back as I understand, have always been assigned to the office of the chief secretary. We are seeing there where the chief administrator does not necessarily need to be assigned to the office of the chief secretary. And because it was there, I just wanted to highlight that so that people know that it's not an automatic, the chief admin have to go in the chief sex office. That is not automatic. But the part that is critical is number 4714 that says, prior to consultation with the Public Service Commission, because it is the Public Service Commission that has to say to the public servants, you have elevated to this position. We are now sending you all out. We are now appointing you. We are now giving you the position that you are, 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 are you know, you've gotten to the point of you pass all your exams and ting, ting, ting. So prior to, put it back up again, uh, uh, producer, prior, prior to consultation with the Public Service Commission on the appointment of the chief administrator, the who? Prime the Prime Minister shall, shall and we're using shall, and a gladio, and a, a gladio say shall, because you know that shall mean you, you have to, to must to do it, to you're bound to do it, shall consult with the Chief Administrator, because Chief your Chief Secretary, because it is the Prime Minister that is the one that is going to be linking directly with the Public Service Commission to have the right. Chief Administrator up pointed in the Tobago Excellent. Space. Stay right there. Now, so we got that uh, from the, uh, the Tobago Constitution. Let's yes, put it from that the way. Tobago so Constitution. Yes. Right. So the, what the Prime Minister is saying is shifting the blame or shifting the positioning of the Chief Secretary to appoint uh, given, given what he's saying. Um, so I, 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 I am asking the question. Mm -hmm. So this chief sec or this uh, administrator left office in May, May the 17th, May the 17th. 17th. and uh, there was out an administrator since, chief then. since then. Since then, uh, let's talk about uh, well sending the information to the prime minister to inform him that there isn't a chief administrator. But Did you all do that? And let's go there. So let me give you the timeline. Okay, fine. Even before the chief administrator demitted office on the 17th of May, today is what day? 
Today's the 13th of June. So it's, it's almost a whole month, month after. Even before that, on April the 17th, which was a month before she was due to leave, she actually wrote a letter to the head of the public service, P, to the PS, saying, earlier, remember, I reaching the age, I going home in a month, and notifying earlier that I going home in exactly mm. a month. So even without us, even without the chief sec, even without any of that, the former chief administrator wrote indicating that a month from now, remember, a month from now, I will be going. And the letter home. went to service and commission. That letter went exactly to service, service commission. commission. Whose responsibility is to hire or fire? Exactly. Very good. All right. Exactly. Good, Mr. Cox. After that, no. no. So I'm giving you a timeline okay, okay. so because you're asking. After that, two days before, so May 15th, and I'm looking at my phone because I don't want to mix up the date. Two days before the former chief administrator left, that is May 15th. The chief secretary wrote to the prime minister saying, hey, you know we're supposed to sit down and talk about this story here. When we go in and sit down and talk about it, the lady leaving just now, in two days, the lady leaving, we just had to sit down and have a chat. As a matter of fact, I saw that correspondence. Mm -hmm. That was it, May the 15th. Right. On May the 22nd, so if you realize, all of this time, the chief admin left on the 17th, eh? mm -hmm. and we honestly had not said anything about it, because this is a normal thing. The chief admin retire, it might take a couple of days, whatever, you know, the prime minister is a busy man, it's, it's not a big deal that we thought at the beginning, this is not a huge deal. The chief secretary and the prime minister actually met at the residence of the Prime Minister on May 22nd. Discussing this matter? That's Discussing this matter among other matters. But because that is a know, few days after the, the Chief Administrator. So have, yes, it's so remember. But he's not saying that eh, according to his pref, press briefing yesterday, he's not saying that. So he's trying to say that the Chief Secretary did not meet with him at his residence on the 22nd of May? Well, uh, uh, or, are we, or, or are we conveniently leaving out parts of, the con parts of what happened to create a kind of image? All right. So the 22nd well, of May so is the, when he met. So the 22nd yeah. of May, they mm -hmm. actually met, and they actually reached an agreement, mm -hmm. because remember it says you're, you shall, must, yes. or to have to mm -hmm. consult with the chief secretary. Both the gentlemen, gentlemen met and made an agreement on who the next chief administrator. So again, we're thinking this is a normal thing. The man possibly busy. I think he went out of the country right after that or something like that. But may I ask you to stick up in this right there? Yeah. Because um, following the press conference yesterday, um, the prime minister is saying that the chief secretary would have recommended someone, this someone, fully well, this someone who he recommended, he knew that there were intentions to, dis, to treat with that suspension and, issue. And let me state here that without a shadow of any doubt that the chief secretary did not recommend anybody who the process for investigation and suspension was happening. The individual who was recommended, who there was an agreement on, is not the individual that was suspended. Hmm. So All right. Is the Prime so Minister telling untruths? All right. Okay, Dr. Fritz. So let me, no, let, yeah. me, let me continue with the timeline. All right. Because I want to ask you, though, before you go on, out of that meeting on the 22nd, 22nd. of May, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, chief, the chief administrator left office on the 17th. So that's 17, 17, 18, 18 19, 19, 20, 20 21, 22, 22 five 22, days after. Several days after. All right. But remember, this, was, but remember this was after sending the letter two, two days months. before. So they met. So they met. All right. What was the outcome? Was there a decision by the Prime Minister to allow the Service Commission to do its duty, its but, due process? But, but that is the thing. So this is what needs to be clear. Exactly. The Prime Minister has to write to the permanent secretary in the office of the prime minister, who is, for want of a better word, the, 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 
and I don't want to use the word head, but the head of the Public Service Commission. So when the Prime Minister writes to his permanent secretary, that permanent secretary in Trinidad, in Trinidad that is the one who then submits that information to the Public Service Commission, and then the Public Service Commission can send a response. Hmm. So the, ch the only thing that the Chief Secretary has to do is to meet, consult, and let's agree that this is the person that we are both agreeing to. And you know, you could, you could probably batter back and forth, however, uh, uh, that this is the person. But on top of all of that, eh? on top of all of that, even after all of that, on the 29th of May, on the 29th of May, which was the day before the holiday, the chief sec then communicated with the prime minister again saying, hey, only remember, we meet a couple days ago, we agree on this, the vacancy is still there, nobody ain't come yet, we're waiting for the letter, we're waiting for the person to show up. And the response was, we will deal with it after the holiday, because tomorrow is a holiday, we will deal with it the day after the holiday. That's what the prime minister said to the chief secretary. That is what. But was the prime minister aware that the, the permanent secretary at CAST <laughs> was was suspended or so, so, investig being investigated so again we are trying to not we for some reason the prime minister is trying to conflate two separate things so let me let me go back to explain another process that again i did not even understand before coming into this position remember i said before that the politician can Hire, fire, suspend. As a matter of fact, Mr. Mr. McFarlane said it before I came on. A politician does not have the authority to do that. We all know that there was, there is an audit that has been happening in the Tobago space since we came in. We came in, recognized that some mysterious stuff was happening just before the election. The office of the chief secretary triggered an audit. We all know about that. He spoke about it already. We spoke about the interim report. Tobago, Trinidad, and Tobago knows about this. Now remember, the chief administrator is the accounting officer in the office of the chief secretary, right? So if it's only two people in the whole of Tobago that knows the information coming out of that report, it would be the chief administrator because she was the accounting officer in the division and the chief secretary. Now the chief, uh, the chief administrator, like any other administrator or any other senior public officer, they are duty bound, meaning the public service regulations basically say that if you see any information, if you see any uh, activity, anything that look like it going against public service regulations or against the financial rules or against HR policies and so forth, you are mandated by law to provide that information to the Public Service Commission so that we as the Public Service Commission can treat with our officers. Because remember, it is the Public Service Commission who is the, in essence, employers of the administrator and chief administrators and, and all of those people. So the chief administrator, because of what she read in the audit, recognizing her legal responsibility sent to the Public Service Commission, say, A, this is some of the things that the audit raising up. I am duty bound to send it to you. These are the officers who may be involved with it. Service Commission, I have done my part. Oh, look, I take my pension. I have done my part. I have giving it to you. Now you as the Public Service Commission needs to do your part. The Public Service Commission now is the organization that can then look at the information, see if it is, you know, good stuff, see if it is, you know, it could be some little frivolous thing that isn't worth it, but the Public Service Commission then took it upon themselves to then suspend a particular officer to do its investigation. Now, nobody says guilty or innocent or anything like that, but at least to get the process in where they can do their investigation and do what they have to do. They, no, but, but it's important. Let me, let me make sure you get this timeline thing. The chief administrator demitted office on the 17th of May, which means that that information to the Public Service Commission must have been sent before 
at all for the latest on the 17th of May. Which means the Public Service Commission must have gotten this information. I sure it's not Friday to get this information. It wasn't fr Friday going when I spoke about it that they got this information. They had to have gotten this information, come together, and made a decision to suspend that officer. Now, are you telling me that our Public Service Commission who understands that this information has been given about a particular officer will then agree that this is the officer knowing that they may have to suspend this officer knowing that that is the legal step that they have to take do you then think the public service commission will then say yes this is the officer we will send to the tobago house of assembly as the chief administrator is that what you're saying you think the public service commission will do okay all right another i don't want to say an accusation the whole question of the uh the ps uh and his suspension uh just just uh, bring some clarity as to the link between the chief administration and the rule of the PS. So, the, the, remember, in the process of the public service in Trinidad and Tobago, if you are in Tobago and you are going up the ranks, you can, you know, you are uh, uh, AE1, AE2, you get up to administrator is the highest level you get to in Tobago. After administrator, you have to go to a ministry in Trinidad because that is just the way the levels are as it relates to the public service. So after you are an administrator in Tobago, your next, your next step would be a deputy permanent secretary in a ministry in Trinidad. And then your next step could be permanent secretary in a ministry in Trinidad or it could be chief administrator. So it really is just the, the, the steps that you go to. So there is no direct connection, for example, between the chief administrator and the PS of CAS. It is just that coincidentally in this case, the officer that is being suspended, the position that that officer holds right now is PS in CAS. Mm -hmm. But my understanding is that the issues that were highlighted that resulted in the suspension happened when that officer was an administrator within the Tobago House oh, of okay. Assembly. Okay. Right. And, just that, and that is why yeah. the chief administrator had to send the information because that is what she got from reading one, the reports. One, one, okay. right. So, so the bl oh, uh, putting the blame on the chief secretary uh, responsible for, first of all, the forensic audit that was ordered against the PS, uh, no, there was no forensic audit ordered against the PS. The forensic audit? There was a forensic audit that was ordered against the road activities, the, the construction, the resurfacing, the resurfacing the road activities. So it was the program that was audited. And coming out of the program being audited, we highlighted this road, this road, this road, this contract, this contract, this contract, this contractor, this contractor, this, contractor, this officer, these officers were part of this Program. And because of the PS or the uh, uh, rule as uh, uh, well administrative uh, responsibilities, as his he comes under question. Is that how we have to interpret that? And that is why the Public Service Commission has done a suspension okay. so that they can do the investigation to determine whether the things that were unearthed are actually true, whether he was right, he was wrong, and after they do the investigation, then we would get a response. You are guilty, you are innocent, you, you get back in. I mean, this is public servants being suspended is a normal part of the process. And uh, you mentioned permanent secretary of caste, but the permanent secretary under the office of the prime minister, um, the, the relationship with both permanent secretary, before we move on, just add some clarity so remember, to answer that. The Central Administrative Services Tobago is actually a unit under the office of the prime minister. Correct. A couple years ago, when the when the the, 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 the the there was a Ministry of Tobago Development under the People's Partnership um, government, they removed CAS and removed it from the office of the Prime Minister and placed it in the office of the Ministry of Tobago Development. Since the Ministry of Tobago Development was disbanded, the CAS, Central Administrative Services Tobago CAS has been placed back 
under the office of the Prime Minister. Now, the thing that is different between Trinidad and Tobago, and is actually quite unfair, it's one of the things we were talking about recently, is that in divisions in Tobago, we only are allowed to have one administrator. So you have one administrator in the whole division, whether your division like mine, that doing everything, one administrator. In Trinidad, you actually have multiple public, multiple permanent secretaries per ministry. So you can have two or more permanent secretaries in a ministry. So we have a situation where there's a permanent secretary in the office of the Prime Minister directly dealing with the Prime Minister, but there's also a permanent secretary in CAS, but CAS is a part of the office of the Prime Minister. And the recipient of that email um, initially providing the next in line to be the chief administrator and then according to the Prime Minister, the retracting of that email, is there any truth to that as well? I don't know that there was an email that was retracted, that was sent and retracted. Remember, we are saying correspondence. Correspond and remember, we are saying multiple correspondence. So there was a letter that was sent two days before mm -hmm. the former ad chief had been left. There was a meeting that actually happened. And the meeting, in there was no change in the person that was recommended at the meeting. And, and then when we had the, 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 the further conversations, there was no change in the individuals that was agreed upon between the two entities. Okay, and in regards to the sorting out this situation um what is the tha's expectations and <laughs> well, yeah, this, this is this is quite honestly this is quite simple and i think it's it's actually one of the reasons why we did not make a big deal about it because it is liter it literally requires the prime minister writing to his ps saying I've consulted with the, to, with the Chief Secretary of the Tobago House of Assembly. Our the recommended Chief Administrator is, and the person name. That is all is a two-line thing. And that can actually happen now. And let me clear up one thing. I am actually, uh, when I saw my good friend Jerry before, he actually said one thing that I think is not accurate in terms of the, the composition of the Public Service Commission at this point. My understanding is that the the, the, the Public Service Commission requires a quorum of three people, and they currently have four members right now. So the Public Service Commission is in a position at this point to answer the call, mm -hmm. in essence, as soon as the Prime Minister write a letter, answer the letter, and, and, and story, and, and, story that is, and that is why we were not making an issue about it, because it really is a simple letter that needs to be sent from the Prime Minister to his peers. All right, so let's move on, Dr. Faith, and let's get into a little bit of uncomfortable waters, given this voice note that has been circulating. Uh, there has been call, or the clamoring, uh, the public has been clamoring mm -hmm. for the silence to be broken on this issue. Uh, the voices that we suspect are uh, officials, your colleagues, and uh, we have not had a response from the Chief Secretary. You as Deputy Chief Secretary mm -hmm. must have some role that you would play in communicating with, your, uh, with the Chief Secretary as to why. Uh, when we are asking, why hasn't there been uh, treating with this matter or addressing this matter publicly? So the, the Executive Council decided uh, very early in this whole thing that we would allow the Chief Sec to be the one who responds to this. Uh, the Chief Secretary actually said that to a reporter some time ago, that he is the one that will respond. And that is what will happen. He is the one that will respond. This team is, is a disciplined team, and this is what the Executive Council agreed on, and that is what we are going to do. The Chief Secretary is going to respond, don't worry. But, um, and, and, and just, to, just to, you know, there has been that in the circular smear campaign has started against the administration. They started to make fun of you all, given the seriousness of this matter, the allegation or the, the intent to commit fraud in office by a uh, top-ranking official. Very damning. Dr. Fitt, you there. And of course, your record is clean in terms of your function and what you have done thus far in the Division of Health, in the Ministry of Health, in the Division of Health. Um, what would you want to comfort the public? Would you have an opportunity to address the public on this matter? And I know you have to tread very carefully, given that the Chief Secretary said that he would speak. What would you want to say to the public about this damning situation? No, I, I would say that we need to just wait for the Chief Secretary to speak. Just wait for the Chief Secretary to speak. Um, it is something that we've had to be cautious about. And when he speaks, you would recognize 
one why we are as hesitant or as cautious to speak uh, because honestly there are some security issues that we need to be concerned about but we are waiting for the chief secretary to speak on this it's matter. All, it's it, it all is well within the, the, the division, it's in the in the in the in the in the assembly uh, with your colleagues. So with my colleagues and I, well, certainly my colleagues and I have actually been spending our time running our divisions, doing what we have to do. If you recognize, uh, you are not hearing any that the, 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 the administration has fallen. You're not hearing that any division is not doing what it should be doing. You're not hearing that we are not going to events and you know doing what we have to do. We are doing what we need to do. Uh, so people need to not be worried about that. And, and it's one of the things that the leadership of the chief secretary, I, I again admire, because you recognize this is, a, it seems like we are getting attacked left, right, and center. And even when he speaks, you would understand where all of this is coming from and how all of this is interconnected and that kind of thing. So as a people, don't worry. The chief sec is going to speak, and you will understand all of it. Dr. Fidby Israel, speaks. I can only imagine the anxiety with our viewers and listeners at the moment, uh, especially with your gestures <laughs> and, of course, your response. But we, we would wait to hear um, a statement or whatever has to, to treat with that situation and among many. But also with regards to the establishment or the registration of the new party. Any update for the, the listening audience? Oh, yes, we are moving along swiftly with that. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. We take, listen, you know, one of the things we've learned in our time in politics is that you need to do things and you need to do things meticulously and you need to take your time and you need to to be very uh what's the word i'm trying to, what's the word i'm looking for you, you need to be very careful not careful not cautious but you need to be disciplined in how things are done and that is what we are doing don't worry the official launch with party symbol and color and all of that will be revealed and yes the media will be invited <laughs> yeah, so it's registered the party is registered now is it that you know, uh, listen we're going through the process okay. we are going through okay. the process i am not saying yes i am not saying no we're going through the process but the official launch will happen soon all right so and that will come after the chief secretary address the nation on this whole, whole well issue. the chief secretary will address the nation shortly and i don't think that the launch of the party will happen before the chief secretary excellent. addresses the nation excellent nope. all right dr Fid, we want to thank you for being with us this morning and of course we, well, we didn't get a touch on health given uh any time but obviously uh you're doing your due uh, doing your do at uh, and quickly uh, is it is it that the the Roxbury Hospital is fully equipped. I was up there for Sunday and I passed by and I said, look, beautiful this hospital looking. However, is it functioning in the, in the capacity of a hospital? It is not just yet. Oh, God, Lord, better be. <laughs> Listen, you know that when the hospital is a fully functioned hospital, you wouldn't even have to ask me. I will be up in Roxbury, the one raised, waving a flag, <laughs> screaming at the top of my right, voice, right. saying, yes, it's a fully functioning hospital right now right. so until then no not yet right. we are currently working through the process though i don't think we are there yet because currently we have accident and emergency 7 a.m to 7 p.m monday to friday we are currently trying to, to to expand it so that on weekends but that when that happens we will make an announcement about that now can have you here not actually as you mentioned hospital and health we can't ask <coughs> have you here not actually about the board obviously mr simon was fired <laughs> Uh, why was that done and who dropped the hammer, Dr. Finn? Uh, so, ha, 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 ha. Hmm. I am very pleased with the board. The board has been working dutifully to ensure that we provide the best care to the people of Tobago. And we are doing everything that we need to do to ensure that the best care is provided to Doc, the people of Tobago. Answer the wow. I answered the question. Tell me, what, I answered the question. What led to the dismissal? You talk highly, you spoke very highly <laughs> of, of Mr. Simon. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are learning that uh, he was fired and un unceremoniously, I'm understanding, and he's challenging. Tell me. So what's the last part you just said? Uh, he's challenging. Ah. So we can't go further. Mm. All right, let's leave it there. <laughs> 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I guess we can leave it there. I mean, we, 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 we waited on the, the installment of the board. Mm -hmm. And of course, as Brother B said, you endorsed the individual. But um, we, again, we await. Um, I, just, I just think that um, a number of persons um, are anxious uh, with regards to plenty of these questions being answered. Yeah. And um, some are even saying that the administration, the administration uh, absent 
although they are doing their works individually in their um, representing their areas and in their divisions but um as you said we are wait for things to unfold all right Doc, and thank you for being here and always we call you at short notice and you always here. Unlike many of your colleagues, and I have to blast them. Yes. Yes. And, and we must say that. We must say that. Um, sure Dr. Faith B. Israel, um, you, you are ever-present. Yes. Um, I, I don't know how you feel um, having to, to represent um, or be the, the, the voice yeah. for, for your team, but um, you are ever-present, and Excellent. we here on Tobago Channel. Thank and you. I actually, I, I take pride in representing my team. I take pride in representing my team. It's an honor um, being the voice uh, that can come out and particularly explain all of these things and so forth, and the team is a team. Okay. All right, so we're looking for the first female pre chief secretary. All right. Uh, <laughs> what is that going to be? What are you trying to do? What is that? Yeah, but anyway, uh, and of course, we, we, I trust my mouth eh, when I speak careful. All right, with that, we want to thank you again, Doc. And of course, a right moment there. We go for a break. When we come back, let's more.